Hi, my name's Gary, and here's a little tale for you. I promise you, Dave, without a shadow of a lie, there is such a thing as a magic toaster, Tom exclaims as the statement bounces off his soon-to-be brother-in-law's face. Tom, there's no chance I'm going to believe you, eh? And if you can, why I wouldn't, eh? Dave says in his Fife accent. Tom shakes his head a little and lets out a wry smile. He stands up without responding, goes through to his council flat kitchen and gets two more cans of baby. Listen, Dave, I totally understand why you would say that. Listen, I'm the first to admit that I've said some wee white lies in the past, but I'm fucking serious now, big man. I promise you. Okay, Tom, gives me a info about the toaster, eh? Where did you get it, eh? And how much is it? Tom, with an even bigger smile now, gives him a wink and cracks open his can of lager. This toaster's meant to transport you back to a time in the past that you're choosing. You think of a place and it'll take you there instant. You're talking about a time-travelling toaster? Davy is inquisitive and sits at the edge of his beer battered couch. Aye, fucking exactly. A time-travelling toaster with a special metal blade. My pals get bathed and he's going to give us a shot at it for free. For free? Retorts Dave, sounding like he just won the lottery. Aye, for free. We're going to go to his tonight and we're going to try it out. You up for it, big boy? Asked Tom smugly, already knowing what Dave will say. Aye, let's fucking do it. The two men down their cans and grab their coats. Then a run-down council scheme. The smell of fresh heroin and bloody veins fills the air. Tom's pals on the fourth floor. Each landing has a peculiar character in it that Dave and Tom pass with their heads down, knowing any sudden movements could get them stabbed. Floor one. There's a group of junkies that are arguing over the price of a tenor bean. I'll give you a fiver for it. Fuck off, you stupid bastard. So not call it a tenor bean because it's a fiver. If I wanted a fiver for you, it'd be called a fiver bean, you dafty. Floor two. A hysterical man is looking out the small stained glass window, mumbling to himself. Floor three. A loud shouting voice is coming through one of the doors. It's getting louder and louder. Well, there's fucking one of you. Disgusting. A female voice screams at the top of her lungs making Tom and Dave turn their heads towards the door. Fuck knows what they've done to get shouted at like that. Tom adds as they continue to climb the stairs. Floor four, and they've made it to Tom's pal's flat. They chap at the door and welcomed by a very small, skinny, rat-looking guy. Oh, what's happening, Tom? Says the skinny guy as he shakes Tom's hand and bumps shoulders with him. Dave, this is Frankie. Frankie, this is Dave. My wee sister's future husbands, both of them shake hands. But when you come before somebody shags you, or stabs you, or bath, Frankie laughs to himself as he closes his door and locks it in four different ways. Right boys, I'm not going to waste your time here, Frankie says suddenly, acting very seriously. This toaster and blade I've got is not something that should be taken lightly. I'm talking about a toaster that can travel across time and space, can transport you back in any time of your life, or the life before. The government are desperate to get this, and nobody knows I've got it until now. Frankie doesn't say another word, stands up and heads to the kitchen through bead curtains that cover the entrance. Here it is, boys, Frankie says, coming back into the main room, holding a blank brown cardboard box. Don't be fooled, lads. This is only a disguise. Stokes folk think it's important or that. What I'll do is I'll give you a test run here. Take it back to one of your houses and keep it safe. Let me know how you get on, and then we'll take it to there. Frankie says, handing the cardboard box over to Tom. He gives a look to Dave, like this is a good deal. Tom and Dave make a swift exit for Frankie's smelly, damp, junky ridden block. During the walk, Tom decides it'd be better going to Dave's flat, as it's a bit closer. Dave agrees, knowing that he'll get first dibs if it's at his house. There's a sense of excitement as the two boys make their way to Dave's flat. The metal key gets turned in the door and both of them enter the flat. Let's get this thing booted up, says Tom as he puts the box on Dave's kitchen table. I'm going to be nice to you now, Dave. Since we've come to yours, I'll let you have the first shot. Don't say I'm not a gentleman now. Tom hands the toaster over to Dave, who then gently sticks the blade into the toaster and making sure that it's proper jammed in. He looks over at Tom, who's about to turn on the toaster. Remember Dave, think of a place in your past and it'll take you there, instant. Dave nods at Tom and smiles. Thanks for this bro, I really appreciate everything you've done for me. Dave gently says in his Fife accent, have fun my man. 
let me know your adventures when you get back, Tom says, as he pushes the on button at the socket. The toaster turns on and blows Dave out his cheap sannies. He dies instantly. Tom picks up the phone. Frankie, ah, it's me. It's done. Tom walks over to Dave's lifeless body and shakes his head at him. That's what you get, fucking shagging my sister, you wee gullible prick. <laughs>